All right. Anybody else in the voice? Nope. Okay. It's only the three of us. It's a Friday. Woo, Friday. Maybe they liked Will's round table so much they they didn't feel like they needed another one. Yeah, I guess I guess no one likes me. That's okay. <laughs> um So Brandon, is it? Yes. Yeah. What do you do? This is ask you anything. <laughs> Alright, well a little, a little bit about myself. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm just a student. I'm at uh, Texas a and I'm working on computer engineering. I do more uh, cool. hardware and uh, kind of working on games is more of a hobby. Neat. That's fun. So, yeah, I can teach you how to do art stuff. <laughs> I do pixel art. <laughs> hey, that's art. That's art stuff. I don't know. It's not easy. Like, people think it's easy because it's pixel art. It's like, no, it's just small. I mean, all digital art is pixel art. It's just how many pixels you use. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I use a fuckload of pixels, and a pixel artist uses fewer, which is actually harder than people think. And photographers use millions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then 3D artists use vectors and whatever, but it still ends up as pixels on the goddamn screen one day, <laughs> like at the end of the day. Ugh. All right, so let's see. Anybody, maybe, we are, maybe somebody is in the text thing? We, I, I pinged everybody. <laughs> but uh, So we are recording, so we can post recording later, so you can assume that you have a bigger audience okay. anyway. Um, uh, yes. And, how about, and, uh, how about you start with okay. a self introduction? I kind of started in the middle okay. of you were talking, so it was like not the best way to start the recording, but it's fine. Okay. Well, we can we can edit that out. Okay. So, hi, I am Terrence Tolman. I am a concept artist at Against Gravity. We are making the VR hit Rec Room, everyone everyone's favorite social VR game. Um, and uh, yeah, I basically do all the all the pre art before the art gets made that you see in the game, and that's. Pretty standard for a concept artist. Uh, I also do a lot of marketing stuff and basically any of the 2D art that we need. Um, lots of textures. Our, our 3D artists that we have now are very good with that too. So we all kind of share the texture responsibility. Um, yeah, so that's what I do. And I also, on my personal time, I also make games, uh, alternative controller games. I was at GDC once for one and going to be there this year for another one. Um, lots of weird VR stuff just experimental tiny little games all over the place game jam stuff but yeah i do 2d art for those or concept for those as well that's who i am and i do other i do photography things on the side but that that's irrelevant to this so can you give an example of an alternative uh controller game that you've worked on oh sure yeah so the one we made last or two years ago was called slap friends you can find it uh on my website i don't know if the video posted in there but um yeah, it's a uh, it's a hard to explain, easier to look at. Uh, it's you know I don't know if anyone knows what those hats that like the raver kids wear with like the sleeves, you know, like the the animal hats that have like the long ears and you can put your hands inside them. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that'll make sense if you Google it, but um, or if you find the game. But yeah, those we turned into controllers for a fighting game, so it's like an actual slap fight. You have to wheel your arms around and stuff. It's very silly. Uh, and this year. We're making a, it's called Puppet Pandemonium, and it's a uh, interactive live theater puppet show video game where the puppets are the controllers. <laughs> so that'll be weird <laughs> and awesome, I hope. So actually, interestingly, that's uh, the, um, the first game, the Slap Friends game, is kind of, not directly, but it, it definitely helped in getting me hired here because they were looking for a concept artist. They found my work and loved it. And what kind of put them over the edge on definitely hiring me was like they saw all this other weird games I make and like non-traditional controller schemes and stuff. And not only was it like a completed project that, you know, went to GDC and everything, but on top of that, it was like a non-traditional control scheme, which, you know, we're making VR. So that's what they want to see, you know, like thinking not traditional games because this is not very much not that. So that was pretty cool to hear that, that like a thing I did for fun and also Yes, for getting attention and career stuff ball rolling, like it was nice to see that that actually worked. So, advice to everybody: make an alt control game and go to GDC with it because it's freaking awesome and it's actually a lot easier than you think because it just lots of people apply, but it's the the uh, I I, th I just think like most of the people who apply get in. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm not sure what their numbers are like how many people submit stuff and how many people get in, but it's a pretty big number. Um, because it's there's so I don't know making something alternative controller is pretty it's not easy I don't mean easy like that it's it's uh, 
I guess what I'm trying to say, you just need a really, really tight, simple concept for one of those things because it like, it doesn't have to be a full meal game to get into the all control thing, right? It has to just show off the controller and be a silly thing or, or whatever thing, a serious thing it could be anything, but it just needs to like function and show off the controller. So it doesn't have to be like a gigantically long game that you have to spend years and years making, you know, you can do it in a few months. So anyways, that's a side note, I guess. What's, yeah, the, yeah, what's the course. difference between the, uh, like being a concept artist and being like an artist that generates like art assets and stuff? Oh, that's a really good question. Okay, so the way I describe concept art is it's a visual conversation. Um, so something I thought of, you know, when I was growing up and like, oh my god, I want to be a concept artist, right? And, and I'm looking at all this art books and stuff, right? And all this stuff. And it's like really, really beautiful stuff, right? At first, at first you think it's, I mean, it is beautiful, yes. But like, that's not its goal, right? And a lot of times in art books, you'll flip through and you'll see like really crappy napkin sketches almost, right? Or like really, really loose, like like slapping some Photoshop brush over like a, a photograph. Um, and I like, I like when they show more of that than like the, the final character model art, like Photoshop, like painting of the character for the 3D artist. Cause that, that's, I guess, all right, that's, uh, maybe let me back up a little bit. Ultimately, concept art is a conversation at the very beginning. There's like two or three stages of concept art, right? Like first stage is blue sky. You just, just draw a bunch of stuff, get some ideas going. Let's say for example, so in our case, we're working on pirate quest uh, for rec room, right? And the pirate themed four player dungeon crawler thing. Um, the idea being that like, at the very beginning, we know what kind of what pirates kind of looks like, you know. So we got a bunch of pictures just from the internet of pirate stuff we like, uh, and then my job was to just make a bunch of just blue sky ideas, just just like two or three different like sketches, maybe a painting here or there, but none of them have to be super finished or pretty. They're basically there just to get like the idea out, and then we can say, okay, we like this one, not this one, this one or that one, right? And then once you okay, next step, the second stage of concept art is once you have a direction, is to kind of flesh that out, right, and start to explore like all right, specifically this looks like this, or this area is going to look like this, or maybe the enemies look like this, or whatever. Right? And then the last step is once you, again, those are all conversations. Those are all quick sketches, just starting out in each direction of thing. Like we need props, we need characters, we need whatever, right? Environments. Uh, and once, again, the same sort of process, you go, okay, yes or no, or maybe change this or add this or do this. And then once you say, okay, we want this, that's when you go back through. And the final stage of concept art is like the production art, which is just, the actual finished art that gives, gets given to the 3D artist or whoever to like actually make a thing from. It's usually like you see in the art books, like you see the character turnaround or you see like a orthographic views of like a building or a, um, you know, a vehicle or something or a prop or something like that. that that's, the, that's the very, very final. That's usually the prettiest stuff too. It's very, very detailed. It's, it's extremely like rendered like, like real life, you know, because it has to be so that all the artists later on if the concept artist isn't there to talk to them, they can like see it and be like, okay, I know what materials to make this. I know what texture to texture this is. I know how to model this the right way from every angle. Um, so yeah, so that's concept art. Uh, production art for actual in-game art is uh, starts out basically concepting. Like you want to make sure you know what you're getting at. And then once you do, then that third stage, like the, the character animation, if it's a 2D game, um, I guess I guess I, I should ask. Did you mean like a production artist, like three D or two D artist? Because it's a slight difference. Uh, kind of. I meant kind of two D. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So so yeah, if you're a two D artist, concept art or production art in game, like so yeah, you're making a two D game. You're going to be making the actual sprites or the actual you know animations or whatever that go into or the backgrounds or whatever it is that go into the game, and then that, that's a. You don't have to do as much like. That, that last stage of concept building, like where you have to production art from like every angle and all other stuff, because it's not going to be 3D. It's just going to be your art, your actual art in the game. As far as producing that stuff, it's, it's basically the constraints. Of, nowadays, you don't really need to worry too much about it because um, engines are smart enough like to handle all this and, and they're performant enough where it doesn't really matter. But like back in the days, you had to really be careful about like making sure your pixel grids are like exactly... 256 or whatever, you know, like a, a square, you know, like all, all that, um, or powers of two, or whatever, so that the engine could actually run it and not break and, and stuff. Nowadays, you don't have to worry too much about that. So it's mostly just whatever constraints that your your system is running on, like you make sure that you draw within those. 
Um, and just being smart about like, you know, layers and things and breaking things out. I think that's probably the, the best thing to do if you're going to make art for 2D games is to draw the thing and then break it into a million layers so you can like do different animations or have things disappear or come back and forth in the foreground and background or whatever, you know, for whatever reason, right? But yeah, I find, I find the 2D production stuff. I love doing that. That's where I started actually just doing 2D stuff um, for 2D games. And it's, it's kind of fun. And uh, it's great because you get to actually see your actual art as the thing that's on the screen, like as opposed to being interpreted through a 3D person, which is fine. Like it's not bad to have that happen, but like I enjoy that too. But uh, it's neat to see from beginning to end your your actual. I made that. It's on the screen. Look at it. You know that's that's pretty nice. You know because all those artists all we're after is validation, right? That's. <laughs> it was, was that helpful? Was that? That was great. Interesting. Was it... All right. What else you got? More questions? Hit me. Can you uh, describe a normal day at work? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't do anything. I do AMAs constantly. Uh, no. <laughs> um, no, I, I come in in the morning and I, I, I laugh at the people who drink coffee because they're so addicted. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> and basically, there's usually our – this is our pipeline, I guess. We've kind of fell into it over, over the past years. Um, our art director – does a Trello board, uh, which we just have constantly for our next things coming up and everything. And so basically, there's just things assigned to you, and you just go and go and. In my case, I just go and draw them, right? And um, and by this point, I've already we've we've come to uh, a pretty solid art style for the game in general. So it, there's not really like too many questions about how it's supposed to look. It just needs to be done in our style so that our 3D artists can make it. Um, but yeah, I'll just come through. I'll, I'll come through the list of Trello stuff that I need to do. And basically, just make a plan for the day. And a lot of times, uh, for me, it's it's pretty easy to because our, our game's pretty low poly and, and not like super high fidelity. Um, so a lot of times, it's pretty easy for me to go into a three D program and do like a really yes version of whatever we need, <laughs> like a really really crappy one that would never go in the game. Um, you know, like maybe like pieces are missing from it. Maybe it's just hacked together. You know, whatever. But, uh, but it looks good enough to take a screenshot of and then paint over that to make it look like the thing. So it's, it's just a faster way to work, right? Like, because we already know, like, what shape it's going to be or what it needs to be for, as far as, like, the art style. So now it's just having, it's, like, translating that into, into the 2D, like, just to give, them, give the image to the 3D artist. It's just faster to do it, make a really crappy 3D version that they can then turn into a really nice one. <laughs> and that's actually usable in the game. Um, but yeah, mostly it's just to do concepts and then we test a bunch, obviously all, all, all the time it's happening. Uh, and then I put it back in the Trello and then move that over to the list of things that 3D needs to do. And then they take it from there and uh, repeat, you know, <laughs> basically. I mean, it depends. Like, recently that's what's been happening because we're doing a whole new quest, which is, like I said, like very art heavy. But um, for a while we were doing the whole UI vamp right like the entire menu system had that was about a week or so of just constantly just coming up with new different ideas for what the menu could look like and that was that was pretty fun because that was kind of stretching my graphic design skills and ui skills from my past so that was fun hi hello hi hello my name is peter um hey a new person here hi, hi. <laughs> i i have a question about um, not so much about art, but about figuring out the right direction for it. Um, oh. But not, not in the you're figuring out by drawing concept art. More about you having a conversation with, say, the art director or other artists on the team mm -hmm. or the games director to try to figure out the direction where they want to take the art. Oh, okay. How do you, what is your process for taking what they're saying or trying to to ask them the right questions to get the right mm -hmm. answers to turn into the question. I just don't I just don't listen to them and I do whatever I want. That's that's, oh. <laughs> that's, how, you, that's how you be a realist. You just you just don't listen to your art director and just do whatever you want and then then he yells at you and then you fix it. No. Uh, <laughs> actually interestingly, jokingly aside, that's actually probably the fastest way to get to 
<laughs> what they do want is just draw what they don't want. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I'm sort of kidding. It, it, now that they mentioned that, that's pretty funny. Um, that's why, I mean, that's why there's concept bearers half the time, right? Like, it's just get the ball rolling, and then they then there's, like, an, an anchor point to start at. Like, that is a valid that is a valid way to, to do it, right? Like, it's just, we want pirates, and then that's a super broad whatever, right? Like, it's, oh, my God, like, well, what kind of pirate? You know, like, it's it's super broad. And then, then you so you do a bunch of different styles of things, and whatever maybe you think, and then that'll give somebody, even if it's completely wrong and not what they want, it's a lot easier for sometimes for people to say, like, no, not like that. Like yeah, this other thing, for right? Sure. So that, that is a valid way to start. Um, there are other ways though too. Like you can honestly, a lot of times, art directors and game directors, um, they'll they'll get stuff from Google, and honestly, that's what I'll do too. Like you know, like uh, uh, and even in like bigger studios too. Like they don't usually tell you this or show you this part of the process, you know. But like they'll have like a mood board, which is just just photos of maybe even other people's art. Maybe either like you know, maybe it's. Um, you know, photos from Google or, or, or Pinterest or whatever, and, and just paintings, other people's characters, like even other games, like, you know, and just movies and shit, you know, and just saying like, hey, here's kind of the direction we want to lean, you know, okay. with whatever it is. Um, and you, it, it, it's, and it's not, obviously you're not copying at that point because you haven't done anything yet, right? So it's just like, right. just kind of give a, a direction. And uh, you know, sometimes they're called color boards and mood boards, right? And it's just like, like Pixar does this a lot too. And they won't even use, they won't use other people's artwork so much as they'll use like they'll just get color and paintings and just pictures and photos, you know, and just like stuff, and and just mush it all together in like this giant board of just like that's the kind of so that's sort of what we did at first. Um, my art director found so the way he when they hired me, the way they described it was it's like it's Wii Sports directed by Wes Anderson, which I thought was pretty tight as a design direction. <laughs> like I was like, okay, that's very clear. Like I could see it in my head, right? Um, which I thought was, was pretty great. Um, so that, that's yeah. good. If you have a good art director, they'll just tell you exactly what they want, which was that, you know, <laughs> which was like a, a cute video gamey Wes Anderson 1970s, right? Uh, YMCA or whatever, right? Which I thought was, okay, that's, and that's what Rec Room still is, basically, right? Still kind of fits that. Um, but so then, yeah, along with that description, that verbal description, there was a bunch of Screenshots from my series and movies, but also like 1970s advertisements, and but also like you know cute cartoony stuff just from Pinterest, right? Like like just to get some like I think we I think uh, I forgot I'm trying to remember what other games and stuff, but because there's not too many other games that look exactly like this, but there's a lot of like low poly games, right? Like in general that yeah. are just yeah, sure. pretty pretty simplistic and cartoony, uh, like. You know, we can say this because we know them, but Job Simulator was like, you know, it's very, very cute, very soft, very, you know, it's not, it's not a, there's no like realistic textures or photo, photo real anything, right? It's all very cartoony. So that was, that was a, that was a pretty easy place to start. But yeah, I guess like you just have to have those conversations and whether a lot of times it's just, uh, I guess, whether it's photographs from Google or Pinterest or actual art that you've done or sketches or, or a doodle on the whiteboard, it generally always starts with some kind of visual, right? Like to some way to like, because you can't just with words, everyone's going to see something different, right? That's why books are so good, right? <laughs> that's, that's why you need to somewhere at some point in the early conversations have some kind something to look at so you can change it up or say this or that, you know? Mm -hmm. Sorry, did anybody else have a question right now? Um Go for it, if you do. <laughs> okay. Um, what's the worst art direction you have ever gotten? Oh, man, make it pop. That's the, that's the joke. That's <laughs> what is it? <laughs> the, the make it pop is, oh, uh, it pop? is, is a, uh, <laughs> it's a joke, but it's, it's a joke for a reason, because bad art directors are like, you know, that's like what they say, and it's like what that, mean, yeah. that means nothing, right? This, this doesn't help you know, at all. Um, yeah, I, that's like I guess if it's relevant, if you're doing some of the colors, very color heavy, there's I, not even much. even then, like it doesn't make like it doesn't. That's not helpful, right? Like it doesn't, even it's if it is so much, it's used so much, and now it's super ambiguous. Like, what do you mean right, by that? Right, and, and okay. it, in, in popping, there's a million ways it could quote unquote pop, right? It could be more contrast. Yeah. It could be more. You know, like it could be more vibrant colors. It could be okay. more, maybe yeah. it's, maybe it's dark and gritty. Maybe I don't know. It means that's so yeah. I've actually never yeah. actually gotten that. Um, okay. No one's actually ever said that to me. Um, worst art direction. I'm trying to think like 
I don't know. It's been, it's been a couple of years of good art direction here, so that's nice. Uh, and I also self-art direct a lot so because I have to for my own projects and stuff. But um, hmm. it's uh, – I should do that for – I'm sorry. I, I'm sidetracking myself. I, I just remembered I should do a mood board for one of my own projects because I'm, like, still not unsure which direction I want to go in. Um, maybe, maybe you've given yourself that art direction. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I just didn't give myself any, really. I have, like, certain oh. ideas. But, uh, uh, well, no, for this one project, I, I just realized I'm, like – because I, I, I could go two directions with it, art-wise, and I, I just need to probably put them side by side and decide, or maybe combine them. Who knows? We'll see. But anyways, uh, yeah, I guess I guess um, I'm trying to think of the. It's usually honestly the worst art direction I've ever gotten in general has not come from the game industry. It's come from graphic design industry, mm -hmm. um, where where people want like clients or or whoever wants to fucking I, excuse me language. Uh, they want to they want it to say like a crap load of text. Yeah. And still like look good and it's like it, it, and they just everyone thinks they can graphic design it's just they can't and it's like yeah you know. no it's totally true i'm not i'm not a graphic designer but like i know you don't want to have a ton of text and you look at everything you look at every company that has a mm -hmm. recognizable logos you look at apple you look at microsoft you look at all yeah, these icons yeah and they're like this is mm -hmm. a very simple design look at how it's it's clean. There's hard edges so that it's recognizable from small and as far. And then they're like, "Well, but those are, you know, those are big companies. Of course, those are recognizable." Like, no, yours will be too if you make it good. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I guess I guess that's the thing is, is I wish people would just trust artists more. Like, and sure. usually, usually in professional capacities, uh, people are pretty good. But, um, but yeah, like when it's a client. That's actually, yeah, I guess, I guess to, I don't know specifically what it is, but the worst art direction I ever get are directly from clients, like when I was doing freelance stuff, like mm -hmm. from hum humans who are not professional art directors. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know what they want and they don't know how to communicate with someone to like get what they want. And designers complaining about like clients and like, they're like, we want you to do this feature. And they're like, no, I mean, well, <laughs> we want to ship in a year. And yeah, yeah, no, not art, possible. Right. It's, uh, yeah. doesn't, that doesn't make sense. And they're like, but this game does it. And we want to yeah. make money, and that game makes money. So why yeah, not? Yeah, of course. Like, yeah, why don't you just do that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm with those people because I'm not a programmer. So I'm totally like, why don't you do the work? Just work harder. Just <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, That's not nice. Uh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. More questions. Anything. <laughs> How many times have you been to GDC? Me? This year will be year number five. And I'll be speaking and have a game in this year. It'll be fun. Is the speaking related to the game or not? It is uh, th called The Art of VR. It's more of a micro talks of six different artists doing weird oh, VR hey. stuff, which is really cool. And yeah, I'm excited for that. It'll be fun. Uh, no, not, nothing really at all. I just, I don't even, I just wanted to put the game in because I wanted to make a public game, like a stupid. Cause, you know, like, I'll keep an easy. eye on your session then. Yeah, 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 I think it'll, I don't know what day. It'll be in the first two days because it's a VR talk, so it's VRDC. So. Oh, Ian's asking a question in the text form. Let's see. Do you have trouble maintaining a style if you've settled on one? Uh, yes. I don't have one. I don't. Like, I actually was just looking at Pinterest today and Twitter and all my other art people and stuff, and I'm like, I literally don't have any, like, recognizable trait, I don't think, that is, makes my stuff mine. Um, because, and I think this is going to be very honest and open, just ask me anything. I'm not consistent on my personal art uh, as far as, like, how much time I put into it. I put, I put a lot of work into building a marketable portfolio that would get me a job, uh, which is what happened, and then that I, I kind of shied away from just building my personal work ethic. Like uh, uh, I do lots of stuff in the service of a game, right? Like art, my art is like a thing I want to make needs this art style. So I'll make that thing for the thing. Right. And so it's not really, I don't really, I haven't really gotten back into just drawing for the sake of drawing, which I think you kind of need to do to build a style. Like you just need to do it. And I think it's, I mean, it's something I want personally because I want to, I want people to be like, oh, look at it. that's that's a Terrence art. That's cool because it's you know, like I said, we all need validation. Um, but otherwise, it's not really 
like it's not super useful in concept art professionally. Like it doesn't because the styles change for like different projects you're working on, different games and stuff. Um, I mean, granted, for the same game, I I've had to stick to the same style for the game, but that's be, but then there's hard rules for that, right? Like there's like this is the way it's supposed to look, so that's easier. Um, but yeah, as far as like, I think it's fine though, like to not have a particular style because I think that like there's not really any again there's not really any use for it. Like look at any art book, right? Um, even for major games, like there's still each each artist has like a slightly different style, but they kind of all gel together because it's the, the style of the game is more important than their own personal style, right? So it's just it, I think it mostly comes down to just technique. Like things are going to end up looking different just based on what how you use Photoshop and stuff. But that's not I don't know if that's a style so much as just you know because people do different things with the brushes, you know. <laughs> so I mean, I guess the ultimate lesson about concept art specifically at least is uh, professionally and specifically is that it's w whatever is the service of the, the thing, the idea, like just whatever's fastest and easiest and, and most visually communicative is the thing you do. Um, so yeah, personally, yes, I want to get back into making, building a style because I haven't yet. Uh, professionally, I don't think you need to. Yeah, don't worry about it. Ian says he was concerned about having a style of his own. It's, it, it, it's, again, it's cool, and it's nice, because I love seeing people on Twitter like, oh, I know that person's art. That's so cool. Uh, but it really doesn't. I mean, it, it, I suppose it could help you get a job, maybe, if you're recognizable. But I, I think that – I think it's not because it's recognizable. I think it's because people see it all the time. Like, the only, only way it's going to be recognizable, even if it's – um, even if you're super consistent with the style, like the only way it's going to be recognizable is if they see it a lot. Like you have to be prolific for that to matter. Like you have to, you have to just do a f, f load of art, like a, a you know, and constantly post it and constantly get people to like it and whatever you know. And that's that's. I don't even know if it's necessary. Like if you just posted that much art, like these people post, like they're making stuff every day, every all the time. Like then that alone whether it's all the same style would be irrelevant because they would just see your stuff and I, get, I don't know maybe i'm wrong and I'm, I'm not sure i want a style though too so don't worry you're not alone and it, but it's okay i don't think you need one <laughs> who's next more questions all right how many games have you worked done here i'm kidding I'm kidding. What was that? How many games have you worked on? How many? Like professionally, uh, like, not just game jams. Okay. Okay. I was gonna say because that's a pretty big list. Uh, not too many. Um, I'd say maybe I'm trying to remember. Well, so some of them were not game jams, but they were like working, like paid to do a thing for another student, though. So that's. Interesting, but I guess honestly, now that I think about it, not too many. I think maybe, maybe three, <laughs> maybe. Um, I got pretty lucky. I did. I got this. Like, I did one of those things where I kind of built. I spent a lot of time building my portfolio specifically to get a job, like as fast as possible. Um, and that kind of lucked out pretty quickly when I moved to Seattle, so that was nice. Um. So yeah, I didn't really have to, or get to, or have to, I don't know which is the way to say it, uh, work on too many. I, I guess I just really started my career a couple of years ago. Like I, I was already in games like in the indie scene and making weird all control stuff and like game jams and all this other stuff, right? Like, but like, those were all in service of building a portfolio, right? Like, and just proving that I could do this stuff and know the industry and know what I'm doing. And then all of that in service of getting a job so I could, you know, survive. Um, so I didn't really... Yeah, I guess this is this one, and I worked on Sunset, not Sunset Overdrive, Sunset from Tale of Tales. Oh, wow. The indie title. Deck. Yeah, I did concept art for them. That was like my first big gig. That was like I my funded first, that oh my God, like, Yeah, it's good. The game's good. Um, yeah, I did, I did concept art for them. I designed a bunch of the interior spaces in the house there. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was, that was interesting, and I liked working for them. That was really fun. Uh, but that was my first ever like official big gig, concept art-wise. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think of other 
I don't think I feel like I feel like I'm forgetting something like important. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, that's okay. Um, yeah, and then this basically, and then because I moved and got this job, and then it's it's been doing ever since. So. Like so, it. I'm kind of curious. I always thought of concept art as something for pre-production, but yeah. uh, you're working on Rec Room, and they're, I guess they're always coming out with new content. And right. I, I, had, I hadn't thought of concept art as something that's like ongoing, like, oh, hey, we're making new content, let's have some concept art. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just kind of... I get You already kind of spoke a little bit about that earlier, though, when you mentioned like your day-to-day. Uh, yeah, I mean... So it depends, right? Like with on the studio and the product, right? We we again we constantly make new stuff, so there's constantly a need for we're we're always in pre-production and production, right? So like we we're always working on new stuff, and so there'll never not be a need for concepts, right? Um, okay. And and so you know, but like for example, like a studio like Bungie or Sucker Punch, I'm mentioning them because they're here and they're AAA, right? And we're we're much more indie. And, and weird and cartoony, right? But like, so that stuff has a pretty normal development cycle, right? Where it's like, you know, lots and lots, like everything's pre-production until the game releases, right? Or until they're making it and then it comes out, right? So like, but at the same time, there's so, the thing about concept art also is that there's like maybe, maybe grand total in the whole world, like 5,000 positions. <laughs> Possibly, like there's way more room for for programmers, right? Um, yes, there's like you know, like Bungie has I think I think ten total concept artists, and that's junior to senior uh, to you know art director and everything, right? Um, that's not a lot. It's a huge company, and there's like ten, right? And then Naughty Dog, for example, has like eight or so, like, and that's a huge company, you know, um, and they make gigantic games, but one concept artist, if they're good, should be able to pump out all the stuff that's needed to be made by other people because it's fast, and that's the whole point, right? Um, so, like, but even then, even, I guess my point, I'm sorry, my example was those because even at those companies, the games they make are so freaking big that, like, you know, usually you're going to, if you get a concept art job, or Blizzard, for example, right, they're, they're coming out with new stuff all the time, too, so that's different. They're more like us. But, um, but yeah, like, their games are so big that, like, you're going to be concepting stuff throughout you know and then like when that game ships you're going to be starting the next one you know so so there's always i feel like there's once you're hired at a place full time there's always work to be done there's always things to be drawing you know (laughs) coming up with new stuff so and if there's not honestly there was a that was a a pretty good uh somebody told me like if you're at a big company or something and suddenly you don't have anything to concept art as as an artist like you're, you're basically the concept artists are the canaries in the coal mines of like the companies going under or whatever, because I forget where I heard this from, but yeah, like, because if no one's giving you pre-production work, that means nothing's going to be produced. So, so like, that's like, yeah. if you start seeing, if you're at a company and you start seeing the concept artists start to leave, like to go find other work, uh, you should probably get the hell out of there because there's not, the, the next game's not happening, right? Like the next thing isn't coming, <laughs> you know? So, because they're, they're the first ones, concept artists are the, and designers, I guess, are like the first to a project, right? Like they're the very, that's also something to answer a question that hasn't been asked, but what do you like most about concept art? Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you, um, is, um, I like that I'm at the impetus, like the very beginning of the, of the idea process, right? Like I, I get to, I'm basically a game designer with the designers, right? Like you, you, you draw stuff with them while they're designing stuff, like on whiteboards and you start, oh, what about this, what about this? Oh, I can look like that, oh, that's cool. Like you're coming up with the ideas at the, at the straight away, right at the beginning, right? And a lot of those get translated into the final thing. And that's, that's really, that's, that's my favorite part about making games in general is coming up with ridiculous ideas. Uh, so, like, as a concept artist, all you have to do next is like the, the next thing is to draw those basically. Right. And so it's really, it's really nice to be. Um, Cause it, again, like if you draw something, I've done this a lot, like on purpose, cause I want something to be in the game. I'll, I'll concept it into the concept art and then somebody will see it and be like, oh, it'd be awesome if we could make that work. I'm like, yes, you should do that because I'd love to, if you did that. And then they'll do that because they want to see it happen. And so you can kind of influence the direction of the game <laughs> quite a bit uh, with the art stuff, you know, um, which is nice. So it's my way of uh, not having to be an actual game designer on, on <laughs> professional, <laughs> just personally. 
I'm kidding. I, I like doing all that stuff too. What are your future career goals, if any? Uh, that's a good question. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, hold on. Do you have other skills like programming that you use with your skill? Remember that question. I'm, I'm going to get the text. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. Olivia, what was it again? I want to remember too. Do I'll you, remind you later. Do you have any career, career long-term career goals? Yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah. Do you have any other skills like programming that you use with your skills as concept artists or mostly just focused on concept art? Uh, I, so I'm a, officially a programmer. I did a rotation script once. So yes, I'm a <laughs> triple threat. Uh, I am <laughs> the most competent programmer ever for rotation scripts. Uh, <laughs> so no, I, I don't program at all. Um, I'm starting to learn and want to learn shaders code and stuff like that. Um, but no, I do uh, 3D stuff, I think is my other ability. And also, I guess, so yes, there's a lot of other skills, but they're all related to art, basically. I'm a photographer in real life. Uh, outside of this, I, um, I'm, I'm learning and, and I know enough 3D to get by and mostly in service of concept art. Like I can do, and I, like for, for example, today I am putting some 3D stuff into the game, um, but that's because we had extra time or whatever. But like m mostly, uh, yeah, it's all art related. So like I'm also used to graphic design, like professionally, like I was a specific graphic designer. So I do all the logos here, all the marketing art. Um, I do, what else? There's also, what's the other thing I was going to say? 3D art. Uh, or for, for concepts of, oh yeah, I, I've, I'm a filmmaker also on the side, like just for fun and like, you know, had some stuff from some film festivals or whatever. And like having editing backgrounds and knowing how to do that, I make all our trailers for the game, right? And like all the other stuff and like any kind of in-game footage that we need to play or like how-to videos or any of that stuff, right? Like I do all that because I know how to edit and I know how to cut and do film stuff too. So like that's really helpful. Um, yeah, and then I think the most valuable for me and kind of any concept artist honestly is not you don't have to be a professional 3d artist because i'm certainly not um i'm not that good uh but know your way around the 3d program and get enough out of it what i do is i just again i just use it for uh screenshots and I'm, i'll make my own gray boxes uh which I, if anyone doesn't know what a gray box is it's the most amazing thing ever it's just it's the level design before the art happens so it's just ugly gray boxes that's why they call it gray boxing um and it's just uh it's Go look up uh, Blocktober, hashtag Blocktober. It's like Inktober, but with gray boxes. Um, and it's for all the major games and stuff. It's really cool. All these guys put out there, like all their art and stuff. And it's really fun because it's like, it's just to show you how the levels work. But a lot of times what they'll do at like big companies, they will, they will have a level designed because it functions because that, that's what has to happen first. Like the level works 100% and it looks like crap, obviously, because there's no art. But they'll take that and they'll screenshot it and they'll give that to an artist uh, to paint over, which is called a paint over, right? And they'll just take that and make it look really cool. And that's like, that's not only super fast way to get to concept art, right? But it's also really fun, I think, because it's like, that. it's almost just like, you're just making this thing, whatever you want, but like making it pretty. And, and uh, so I do that for myself, right? Because it's just faster, right? Then, then um, I because I could do all the perspective and all the friggin' shadows and all that. Like, I could do all that stuff. Like I, I'm a professional artist. I've been doing this for years. I could do all those things. But gosh, that takes another three hours, right? And like that's time you could be spent doing something else on the job. So like it's if you can just throw together a bunch of BS blocks and cubes and crap just to get some shape, um, something there in the scene, and then just paint on top of that. Like it's really great to to do that. And so I think yeah, I think knowing knowing enough about a three D program just to mess around in it and take basically as your end goal of having a, a screenshot, <laughs> like. Like is is if that's all you have to do, or that's all as far as you can go, then that's fine because that'll really really help you with with just everything and just speed and, and everything. It's really fun too. Um, and then also, I guess the other skill is it was slightly related to three D. So it's being able to UV map something so you can make a texture because uh, that's still two D art, but it's using the three D stuff. So yeah, knowing that stuff is really helpful because then yeah, if you have all those skills, I'm pretty sure as an artist you'd be pretty fine to get any either any one of those jobs. Uh, you know, or or just kind of like a combination of all three, and being able to do all those is is great. And then you said career goals, so I can't talk too much about. Um, I guess I can sort of. Uh, so my original career goal was to get a job anywhere. It didn't matter where. It was to move out here and get a job in, in the games industry. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, and then it it was like. Then I got this job, which was actually really cool and really popular game. So that was neat. So I still, I'd still like to maybe possibly work at a AAA company, uh, like a Bungie or something or a Sucker Punch. I, because I, I, 
this is a personal thing, like as an artist, like I really love the cartoony, like kind of Pixar kind of goofy art style that we have uh, on Rec Room. I, I absolutely adore it. And I love doing that kind of stuff. If you look at my portfolio, you'll see I have all kinds of realistic, like hard sci-fi 3D stuff, right? And then I've also got uh, cartoony and cute stuff, right? And I, I like, I genuinely like both of those styles. Um, but I would like to kind of do the prettier sci-fi realistic stuff maybe for, you know, all day, every day, for eight hours a day for a while, just to get really good at it, right? Um, that that might be something. Uh, that, that'd really be the only reason. And just to say that I worked on a big, big AAA game, that'd be kind of fun. Um, but ultimately, all of that is in service of the final goal. Ultimate goal is start my own studio um, and make a, you know, a indie darling, which is the name of the studio. Don't record that. Edit that out. I don't want to tell everyone that yet. <laughs> but yeah, to start uh, okay. end goal being to start my own studio um, and make a make an indie hit or, or seven or twenty, you know, uh, and, and and be um, be kind of you know a name in the industry that people can look to to learn about how to make weird games that aren't freaking the same as all the other freaking games. And most indies do that, which I like. And I, I, mean, I guess ultimately, like I'm an artist in like the most pretentious sense of the word, right? Like. Um, I make weird stuff, and it, like, again, even the concept art and all this other stuff is like in service of making a thing, right? Like whether it's a film or a photograph or a game or whatever, like the, the thing at the end of the day, right? And I guess ultimately, like my art is as is interactive media. I really enjoy like all of the the weird art film stuff I've done way back, like in school was all interactive. It was all like you know proximity based stuff. It was weird stuff, like, and I I really like interactive media in, in general, and I think that. That is like all of this, all of this skills, all of these kind of different overlapping interests and stuff kind of pour into that, into like creating stuff that people can play with and use and touch and do stuff. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the career goal is complete creative freedom, ultimately. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Yeah. Hope so. <laughs> I, I think that's pretty similar to a lot of people in the industry. They yep. kind of see them as like a series of projects and the goal is just make better projects. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really it. Like that's the, I mean, that's the reason I wanted a job, right? Was not, not just to like, yeah, so I can do art all day for sure, obviously, but it's so that I can eventually do my own stuff. Right. Like, and I, I love Reckrum. I have a huge stake in it. Like I was here at the beginning and I, I've, you know, steered the art to where it is now. And I love that. And, and it's great. And it's still not, like I own that part of it, right? But it's, this isn't my game, right? Like I don't, I didn't come up with this idea. This wasn't, you know what I mean? Like this isn't, this isn't my baby, right? Like, uh, I mean, I love, I love this baby. It's, I'm like it's godparent, you know. I, I, it's, it's totally down. Like, you know, it's up. I'll, I'll go, I'll go take the baby out for ice cream and 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 the uh, hot dogs on the weekends or you know, whatever. But like, I'm not, it's not my baby, right? Like at the end of the day, I give it back to someone else, and so I, I haven't a. Uh, and so, yeah, so I want to make a, a bunch of stuff and have my name attached to it as, as the, you know, as, as, the, uh, as the group, as the team that makes really cool stuff, you know. That's all. More? More questions? Hey, um, I was just curious, where are you based? I'm in Seattle now. Oh, you're in Seattle now. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I was in upstate New York, and there wasn't much there uh, in the way of games. There is Vicarious Visions and First Playable. Uh, First Playable is very small. They do educational stuff and Disney games and stuff. Uh, so they're, they do, they're mostly contract-based now. A um, few people who are full-time there, but it's a pretty small company, so that, that was, wasn't going to be too viable for me. Uh, and then also Vicarious, I wasn't, I don't think, good enough at the time to get a job there. <laughs> um, and also that it's from what I know about them it's I mean it's the only big company it's the only video I mean the fact that we have two video game companies in our town is, is amazing but um, it, it's uh, and so if anyone doesn't know Vicarious are the people who made they actually worked on a bunch of Destiny 2 stuff recently but they also did um, Skylanders and all that which is cool um, point is though big game companies lay off people half the time right it happens all the time we know this uh, 
so you get laid off in upstate New York from a game company. Where the where the heck are you gonna go? Right? There's no other places. <laughs> even when they experience. even when they promise not to lay you off, they yeah. still do it. I know. So so yeah, it's. I I decided to go to somewhere that has just more, you know. Um. So that I could, you know, just in case if something. If this this company didn't work out or whatever, I'd have, I had to have other options, you know. Yeah, it's common. It's common in the industry to hear of people who just move around the country yeah. a lot. Like they just move yeah. from job to job. And but that's sort of why it's sort of why it's good to be on. I feel like if you want, I mean, you don't have to be, but the West Coast is probably the best because, like Seattle alone, there's like enough companies to sustain you. Um. Or we could just, you know, change the industry so it's not hire and fire. Maybe we could, you know, have a union or something. But you know, uh, <laughs> be nice if you know we could make the industry not as volatile, you know, and like, oh, sorry, game failed, get out, you know. <laughs> um, that's something else. Actually, career goal I want to change too is is a uh, change the, the. I'm not going to talk too much about it here, but uh, change the the business model and, and stuff and, and make it somewhat more viable uh, whether or not the, the game is super fucking, excuse me, super flipping, you know, hyper successful. Like it shouldn't have to be to just pay your people, right? Like I think there's ways around that. So anyways, that, that's a different conversation. But uh, yeah, that's, that's something I want to change in the industry is, is how we kind of treat people like just assets that you have and then they're gone and they doesn't matter anymore and it's kind of stupid and i think i think it's just true it's like all the all the best companies that make the best content are they keep their people they keep their good people you know and, and it's just silly to it makes no sense to just fire immediately just have have a couple things in the in the list you know? yeah anyways. and when uh when uh, when what was it uh the company that makes bioshock Bio- oh yeah uh, Infinite? No. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 those guys. Those guys. Uh, after, was it Bioshock Infinite? They just basically shut down the company. So, because yep. the, the head designer wanted to experiment with having a smaller team. That was like yeah. a huge blow to a lot of people's jobs. Yeah. yeah it's, it's really, it sounded it, like it, it was like, on a whim, too. And so a lot of people were mad about that. Well, sure. And, I mean, it was some, some of it financial, some of it you know, personal reasons, but yeah. And that's, that's kind of garbage. And then all those people try to get jobs other places and that displaces other people. Right. So it's like, I don't know. It, and this is a problem. This is why the industry is not as diverse as we'd like it either. Right. Because it, you know, the only, the only people who can up and move around whenever they feel like it is, you know, rich white dudes. Right. Like, so it's like, it, and, and you young know, people too. Yeah, you're right. Young people, yeah. Like if you're if you're a, a parent or something, you can't just move every six months with your kid and like not know if you're gonna have enough money to pay your mortgage, like buy a house, like all that. It's so, it's so stupid. Like, you know, you, you you can't you can't live when you don't know what's like your financial situation in six months, right? Like that's horrible. And yeah, and so yeah, young people, able people, white people, like you know, dudes. Like it's it's very very much designed. Well, not even designed for their sake because it's still shitty. <laughs> but it's, they're the only ones who are able to rise up to that or whatever. Now you shouldn't say rise up, that are able to. Yeah, if you if you, you think know. of it as a system uh, with a lot of yeah. randomness in it, uh, the the entities that tend to stay around tend to have some kind. Or the ones of, who can. Yeah, and there's yeah. some kind of advantage, and then and then that yeah. it just ends up showing the the mm-hmm. deeper uh, yep. like. I wouldn't say biases, just like the deeper yeah. disparities and patterns in society at yeah. large. Yeah, exactly. And and you end up with shittier games. To be completely honest, <laughs> like, you end up yeah. you end up with very you end up with very samey garbage. You know, uh, that doesn't actually do anything beyond just shoot and kill stuff. You know, because that's what works. So we need to keep doing that. Rah, rah. Also, Maybe something I wanted to. Business. Something I wanted to mention earlier was like so far, all almost all of these AMAs have been with people I know in Seattle, and so it might it might make people think like, "Oh, Seattle sounds great. There's so many people here." Like, well, that's just because of me. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, it's true though, right? Like, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Seattle is a pretty good 
I guess like in like if you're gonna look for a place or a region to mm -hmm. that you might think is m more stable than like a place where there's only one game company, I mean, Seattle's like in a yeah. much better standing. Uh, that's I, what, that's, I think Seattle's a great place. Um, yeah. I I would if if you so here's the thing it's also much cheaper than Los Angeles or San Francisco which are the other For two now. studios that have quite a few game studios. It's no it's still infinitely cheaper. <laughs> like my my apartment is like fourteen hundred right and it's a nice part of town and it's right on the link rail it's like downtown whatever but like that really same good. apartment that no no I know that's yeah. I know that same that exact same apartment, that exact same apartment, like exactly as close to the train, exactly where it is, like near, next to our grocery store for for like, like that exact same thing in San Francisco would be five thousand dollars easily, like sure. if not more. Like so, I don't even, I don't want to hear people saying it's it's going to be bad. Like, yeah, the thing is, those are going to get more expensive too. All of capitalism is is broken, so we you know we understand that. But if but practically speaking, like you're going to get paid more in Seattle and it, relatively the cost of living here is kind of cheap compared to every other major city out there. And if you want to be in games, there's a crap load of game companies here and there's small ones, there's big ones. There's, you know, there's, there's other things you can do in games that aren't necessarily like working at a game studio. Like there's, uh, you know, like Microsoft has stuff. There's Amazon has stuff, like all this stuff. So like there's Oculus is up here. Oculus is up here. There's just a ton of people too. There's a huge network. And so it's, and again, it's pretty cheap to live here, so I I don't know. I think it'd be a smart move to move to where it was for me, and I, I not you know obviously I'm somewhat privileged, but like, uh, you know, it it seems pretty stable out here if you know what you're doing, and you just you know if you're a professional and you want a job and you have experience, you, even if you don't, like I didn't, you know, really I had some, but like I I just think if if you can make it out here, if you can do it. And or if you can get out here and like be on the couch for a few months, you know, until you find a job or something, I think you. Did you, you want to say something? Uh, Peter, did you want to say something or not? Oh yeah, I was actually wondering why is the cost of living there so cheap, and is it the weather? No, the weather's fine. They're all liars. Um, the weather's great. They're they're all liars. They're all babies. Uh, they're all little baby liars. They're, it's okay. raining. Like, no, it's not. It's sprinkling. You jerk. Um, Oh, well, yesterday it rained a lot. But anyways, whatever. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why. I think what it is is Seattle. It's, it's sort just of, economy. Yeah, Seattle was a little smarter than San Francisco. Um, well, so also like Seattle was going to be the Tech Valley, right? Like the Silicon Valley, right? Because Microsoft and Amazon both came here, and it was like a thing, right? Um, but then Silicon Valley happened in, in Silicon Valley, right? Like Google happened and all that other stuff, right? Um, yeah. And so all the money went there, everything went there, and then there was this huge bubble, and now it's getting to the point where, oh, my God, even the rich people can't afford things. Like, well, you know, that means all the poor people couldn't for a long time, or so forget you, but whatever. Point is, like, the, Seattle kind of saw, from my understanding is that Seattle saw that happen and was like, ooh, dodge the bullet there, and is was taking preventative measures for stuff like that, right? Like making it so that, you know, there there are rent caps in this city. They're they're pretty high, but they they do have them, right? And that kind of keeps things livable. Uh, there's a bunch of other like stuff for like corporate buildings can't be a certain I don't know size or whatever stuff like that. Like like there's certain things they're doing that like they're not the smartest and best things necessarily for sure. But it's the fact that they're doing anything and they're sort of aware of it's like you know obviously like unchecked just straight up growth and capitalism is bad. <laughs> Um, so the fact that they're even like aware of it in general, uh, and also like the you know minimum wage being higher is good. It's not as high as it should be, but it's still like they were one of the first cities to do that, you know, stuff like that. So it's like it's a. Uh, I think it's a lot of things. I think it's a lot of sort of like the vibe here isn't like I don't know. I'm not. I mean, I don't know. I'm not the expert on this, but all I know is that it is much cheaper than every other big city in the country. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, and there's a lot of game studios, and so if you want to be in this industry, any tech industry, this is probably the best place to be at the moment. I uh, later I want to bring on some guests from other parts of the country. Uh, oh yeah. For these early AMAs, I've just been going through people in my immediate yeah, of network. Course. Yeah. 
But yeah, I know there are other towns uh, that are good for game devs mm -hmm. uh, in, in the United yeah. States and in other countries as well. Yeah, I mean, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Boston's not the worst. There's a few studios. There are not very many, but there's a few. Um, who else? Uh, Toronto is pretty big. Montreal. Uh, those are Canada, Texas has those are... a lot of first-person shooter Texas, companies. Texas, yep. Yeah, if you want to do that. Uh, but yeah, I th Vancouver, yeah. Canada. Yeah. So it's Vancouver's got some, yeah, and, and it's interesting because, like, I don't know, it's so. The it's so sparse, right? used to be in Phoenix, but I believe they closed during the recession. Yeah, yeah, sad. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there's a few other hubs, but they're not. I don't think any of them are. I think Seattle's got the biggest number of studios. I think. I think like San Francisco has the biggest number of big studios, or it might be LA. I'm not sure. Also, um, the indie scene has definitely been leaning towards remote work lately. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, I'd, in general, you mean? Yeah, it's kind of been like that in general. But I also feel like years and years ago, sense. yeah, years and years ago, the people had this perception of going indie as like just like joining a company with your friends, and that means people who live near you. <laughs> But nowadays, yeah. everyone has gotten much more comfortable with. Uh, like well, projects. it's just easier nowadays to be to work online, right? Like it's just yeah. Like we're we're doing this from a, I don't know where you are. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the same city, but I'm in the UW. I know, but I don't know where in the city. <laughs> yeah, Brandon, I can't labs? have you with Phoenix. Uh, there is there is a bunch of people. Look up on Facebook. Look up Tim Winsky. Brandon. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm sorry. My mic was okay. Good. Yeah, look up Tim uh, Tim Winsky on Facebook and just tell him I said hey to tell you to go say hi. Uh, he's cool. He's <laughs> done a bunch of he's done a bunch of indie small. He has his own little company. He does um he did a bunch of Cartoon Network games and stuff. He made an Adventure Time mobile game. Uh, he's cool. So there's a there's a bit of a uh, group in Phoenix. So maybe if you haven't found them, that's he he'd be the way to find the the people doing stuff there. Nice. Um. You know, I, I don't know how many actual companies are there. Feel free to write his name in chat, big... so you have the spelling. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how to even spell it. I think it's just the way it sounds. Well, I don't want everybody, like, <laughs> yeah. messaging him. <laughs> you can de pe uh, just direct message him if you want. Yeah, that's, no, that's fine. It's there. It's fine. Tim, uh, if he hears this, Tim, you're awesome. I love you. Good guy. Uh, you're about to have a lot of new friends. <laughs> Do you have his address? Uh, yeah, so it's uh, no security <laughs> number. I mean, look, 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 Tim. They say I said ask me anything. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah this I, that's the size. only person I know of. That's the only person I know of who's in Phoenix right now who does game dev stuff. But uh, he's got a cool mustache too. So yeah, I know you have him on Facebook. Um. Yeah, it's very, very twirly mustache. Um, I miss him. I hope I see him at GC. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I, I don't know. Nothing. I don't have a question yet. Someone has to ask me another question. <laughs> uh, this can be the last question. The hour okay. is pretty much up. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm tapped. <laughs> All right. Olivia, what you got? I did have a question earlier, but I forgot what we were talking about. Tabs. All right, well, I'll ask one and then answer it. Okay. How do you break into the industry? Whether <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, and my answer, honestly, is is with a sledgehammer. Like, break the fuck in. Um, and, you know, I couldn't afford to go to big conferences at first. Uh, and I, I hate that this advice is, is go at your own pace, obviously, whatever works for you. But... First step, first and foremost, biggest step is it's not going to be glamorous at first. Uh, if you're not, if you're not rich, <laughs> you know. Um, first step is get financially stable. Whether the, and that's what I had to do, right? Like, because I was not, I, my family was poor, and I grew up in a small town, and like I, you know, I had no way to do any of this stuff, right? Um, so what I did was I, I, I had to get a non-game jobs first, right? So I could afford bills and live, and then I could focus on my stuff, right? Um, so I got like a graphic design job or whatever. I, first, I worked in restaurants and other junk, right? And like it was horrible and garbage, but I had to do it, right? Uh, and then 
then I worked at a graphic design job, not games related at all, but doing art for a living, right? And that was step one. And basically, that was enough. That was to, the whole point of that was to get a nine to five. Any nine to five didn't matter. You know, I, I pointed it at at art because I could do that, right? Because I didn't have a degree because I can't afford one. Um, but yeah, I, I did that so I could have a stable somewhat. I mean, it wasn't getting paid very much, but it was enough to you know have a have a have a roommate and and uh, save money and just have time like nine to five work, and then I'd come home from work and you know from five to 10 or so. So not, not killing myself over it, not, you know, going super hard, but like I would have another few hours to like do some art for my portfolio. And, and then specifically the way I got the story about getting to work on sunset was pretty interesting. And I suggest everyone just does it. And, and this is um, the, the ultimate story of that. The whole reason I even did that is, is the way to break into the industry is just, just make games. Like whether, whether it doesn't matter what that means to you, right. Or whatever your, whatever your role is in the game industry. Like I want to be a musician. I want to be an artist. I want to be a programmer. I want to be a designer then do that and make things. <laughs> and yes, that's hard to do. You don't have to make giant games, make game jam games, make a lot of them. Go make just games on your own, make very tiny games. Like you know, nobody at a game studio is gonna worry if you made a gigantic thing. It's more that it's a complete thought, a finished thought, a thing that's a thing that you could maybe put on the app store or put somewhere, right? Like you've made things that are finished. Those things don't have to be big or fancy or polished or anything. They just have to be in existence. Um, and then you can talk about them. Then you can discuss those things with the people, you know. And so uh, in service of that, like I saw on Twitter that Tale of Tales needed a concept artist for Sunset. And I was like, well, I don't have anything on my portfolio because the idea was send us your portfolio and we'll give you an art test, right? So I decided to skip that step and just do the art test because I know what the games they want. Like they were showing stuff off about it. I know what they wanted the game to look like. They were talking about it just on their blog and stuff. So like I just made four pages of concept art for their game, like for like without any art direction, just I mean with some art direction, I guess, because all they had all the all the stuff they were talking about, like on their blog. So I had that, and I went off that, and I just made for some of it they used. They actually paid me backlog stuff, like stuff, because they were like, "Hey, can we just pay you? How how long does it take you to make those? We'll just pay you as if you did that while you were here, <laughs> like because we want to use them." Um, and so that was pretty nice. Uh, and then I did more for them, right? So it was like. And that's why I got the job, right? Because so many other artists were like, were applying for it, right? But like, they were waiting. You know, it was funny because they emailed me back and they were like, "Hey, so, um, yeah, you kind of put a wrench in the gears. We were down to two artists. Now we're up to three, like to, <laughs> to choose from, right?" Um, so yeah, good luck. And then like, then they hired me because of the fact that I went on my own and did not wait for them to see if I, because I, I'm sure I was good enough, whatever. But like, I had nothing that was what 1970s. Uh, art dealer interiors in South America, like that's where they, like that's the game. So like, I had none of that stuff in my portfolio, but now I do, and more importantly, like, now they do, right? They had they had stuff directly to see without any art direction, so they were really happy about that. So that that's that's like the the story of like, how do you get in the industry? How do you break in the industry? Bring a sledgehammer, like just go to every event that you can afford to. Obviously, again, first get financially stable, like even if it's a crappy retail job or anything get somewhere where you can just afford to live like so that that's not a like e even if even if you're completely destitute and you're like not like you know making tons and tons of money as long as you can afford you know your 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 bills and your your food and maybe if you're lucky have health insurance um and then just focus on the thing you want to do and make those things happen and it's going to probably take took me about 3 3 years or so to really get to a point where I was confident enough and had enough stuff in my portfolio to, to actually get work and then yeah so anyways that's that's the advice like and again like being financially stable is going to mean different things for different people right like like uh it's very privileged for some people they don't have to they're already there right like a lot of kids are just born into a family that can afford for them to do it right and they just work on their stuff and they live at home and live with their parents and they just do it right that's fine do that um for some people it's going to mean working two jobs. It's going to mean having very little time to work on your, on your artwork. And that's paying you know, off your programming loans. Your game. paying off student loans, paying off, you know, just paying your rent, like just, you know, living if, you know, paying medical bills, who knows, right? I had tons of medical bills. So like, you know, not, not everybody's lucky enough to be, you know, rich white dude, <laughs> but uh, those, those of us who are not, it's like, you know, it's, it's going to take a lot more, but, I think that's the path to doing it is just whatever it takes. First step is get somewhat financially stable footing 
so that you can focus on your craft uh, and on going to events or being just online presence. And, you know, and yeah, it's exhausting. Sometimes people aren't even able like physically to do that because, you know, they, they're, they don't have the same bodies as everyone else. And it's not actually viable for them to work that long on stuff, you know, and, and that's, so it's going to take them even longer and it's going to be more difficult, um, which is why we need other systems in place to help people. But anyways, um, until we have those, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, and that's why people in the that, industry will help each other along the way. Like, yes, exactly. Yeah, like and, and all that garbage. Yeah, for sure. I, I just basically want people to just any any professional who just says just quit your job and like go do it, man, is a complete fucking bastard and a jerk. So don't listen to them uh, <laughs> because that's what it looks like from the outside. But yeah, that person had their parents' money. That person was already stable or somehow had you know like, nobody just actually does that because you know that nobody wants to talk about because they want to feel like they earned it and they did it all on their own. And it was, you know, whatever, but no, they had support, they had help. There's no way you can't just do that. Right. It just doesn't make practical sense. Um, so all those people who you see, like who glamorously just up and left and made it big somewhere, uh, you know, it's like, that's cause they had something else or they, or they, yeah, even if they worked for it to get to that point, it's fine. They, those people wouldn't give that advice though. Right. The people who actually work for it would say, you're gonna have to work hard for it. Like it's going to be time consuming and difficult and it's not just going to be an overnight thing. And, and like, so I guess, yeah, the ultimate takeaway from that is just, like, anyone can do it. It's very doable. It's just a matter of focus and a matter of, like, being really diligent about, you know, not – and, again, not making something – you know, you're not going to make the indie hit tomorrow, right? And, and anyone who does – I've seen this happen. I've seen people quit their jobs and make an indie hit. That's great. They're freaking dead. They're exhausted. They're, like, completely, like, a mess. And it's, like, I see all these GDC things, these post-mortems and stuff, and it's, like – they, they, their lives are destroyed basically because they, you know, well, that's my God, basically like, what don't, indie don't, game the movie was about. Yeah, don't do that. Don't freaking do that. That was kind of horrifying. That's, that's the, it, it is, it, but that's the thing. People think that's the only way to do it, and it's not. There's a much, much, much more stable, albeit slower and less glamorous path. But I'm, I'm, I'm on it. Nobody, like, nobody knows who I am. Like, I'm not a famous indie dev yet, right? Yet, but because I had to get a job first. You know? Like, and I've met tons of people now and I have a bigger network and stuff. It's great. Like those ideas I had for those games I want to make are still there. And now I'm actually in a much better position to make them. Cause I know people from the industry. I also just know more about making games cause I worked in the industry professionally, you know, like I know more about, like I know more people in the industry too, that could maybe help me later on. Right. Like Livia, you want to help me make my game, right? You want to make a game with me? You want to partner up? Yeah. See, you said yeah. yes. I, so <laughs> see, uh, and I wouldn't know you if I didn't work in this industry, right? And so it's like, I think I think this the taking your time and making sure that your livelihood is secure is the less glamorous, but definitely more definite. And like, you're going to be less likely to burn out. You're going to be less likely to like um, give up on it. You know, if one setback, you'll be able to like, oh, well, I still have my job, so like, it's not my dream job, but I still have a job, so I can like work on stuff, you know. Um, and continue to get better and stuff. And I, I don't know. I think that's that's what that's how you break in. I guess you bring a sledgehammer, or if you don't have a sledgehammer, you you bring a pickaxe, a tiny one, and you just chip away slowly but surely. But you know, you're, you're there. You have a tent outside this wall that you're breaking through. You have a, you have a, you have some food and like a you know pot of water. You know what I mean? Uh, something to cook with. And you know, anyway, yeah. I'm, I'm, that was dude. a pretty that was a pretty <laughs> good note to end on. Yeah, like really, really and then strong ultimately advice. Ultimately, we'll, we'll ultimately we'll all just break that wall down together, and then there won't be having a, a breaking in. We'll just be, you know, going to work. <laughs> yeah, I, I I really like agree with everything you said. Like the struggle to kind of like break in and stay in is like one of the things that, that people spend years and years thinking about and focusing on, and. Yeah. It's it's normal. It's uh it can be very yeah. discouraging for all the reasons you said, but it's it's also mm -hmm. uh like if you if you're having if you like I took what three years after I graduated until I started working professionally. Yeah. Uh and I even like added up like, you had, you had. all uh, counting all the years I was in school, it was technically like seven yeah. years after yeah. I even decided I wanted to work in games that I finally did. Yeah. And yeah, and, and you had other jobs in between there. You were doing other things, right? Yeah, like to support yourself. Yeah, because you have to, and that's normal. Like that's fine. I feel like just that that advice in general, like like 
for example, right? If you take any other industry, right? Not any other industry, but like a, a very established industry, right? Um, I don't know, like uh, accounting, for example, or something, right? I don't know. Like you, you have a job that's not accounting while you're in school, right? And you go out of there and then you get your first accounting job and it's not the most biggest company, whatever, right? And eventually you work your way up to being an account manager, you know? Like you're not going to be that out the gate, right? Like, and that's, a, that's what people, that's what the indies, uh, a lot of people think, or, or the big the big studio guys who are like, yeah, you know, and to be fair, some people do come out of college and get like, like my friend, she got a job at Blizzard as an artist, a concept artist over there, which is amazing, just out of college. But the thing is, she worked her butt off in college, focusing directly on that the entire time. Like, that was her thing. And she did that constantly and made a bunch of games, game jam games, and other things in between and everything else. So like, that's a, and that's a rare thing, right? And like, she worked harder than probably anybody else at that school. <laughs> so I don't actually know if that's true. I shouldn't say that because whatever. But like, yeah, and the thing it's, you mentioned about uh, starting with a different job, uh, it's also very helpful yeah. to have a backup job like that to prove that, yes, I have right. already established some connections or, or have some experience in this other type of work. Yeah. So, like, the industry, as we just established, is so volatile that having a backup job yeah. is, like, well, even, a godsend. Even, like, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I, 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 com- I basically completely cut ties with the restaurant industry, right? Because I don't ever want to do that again. Um, <laughs> well, you could do and, graphic and, and, design work if you really have to. Right, exactly. If I really had to, I could I could do that still. And that's that's fine. And I guess that's, yeah, programming too, right? Like having some kind of backup. Like if you're a programmer, like know some web shit or something. You know? I don't know. Um, again, I think we, as a... I think as a general, it'd be good to, for everyone to work up toward, like work the industry up towards not needing backups and not, you know, being a little less volatile and being a little more inclusive. Um, and just the, that's going to take, it's going to take me making this new business model I was talking about and having it be successful and then proving the rule that like, yeah, it can work. And if you're not doing it, you're a jerk. You know? <laughs> so, not only, not only that, but it's, it's less financially viable. That's a whole other thing I won't get into, but yeah, ending on the, the idea that, we can all, you know, it, it just takes a focus. And I think it's, it's reckless and dangerous to just up and quit your job and move across the country um, without some kind of backup or without some kind of plan. And without, and in general, like that whole thing of like, just, just chipping away, just going slowly, but surely like being like, I, I feel so bad, but also like kind of like, well, yeah, that's going to happen. Like I, all those indies that, that like they all just quit their jobs and they try this indie thing and they fail because the game wasn't successful and all that stuff. It's like, well, yeah, like that's <laughs> like that might happen. Like it happens a lot. Like that sucks, but like you know, maybe just instead of making it all in two years with everybody's salaries on the line or using your savings, maybe make it over four years and do it on weekends and nights. And that way, <laughs> you know, it, like it's not as you're not as desperate to like make sure that this one thing is like, Oh my God, it's the best thing ever. And if it doesn't, we're all dead. Like, ugh, that sounds awful. <laughs> sounds like you'd make worse art too. Cause like you wouldn't be able to focus on it or you'd like, you'd be able to focus, but like you'd be so stressed. And so I guess some people live on that. I don't know. I don't, I can't deal with that. I... Well, thanks for taking the time to yeah. talk to us. Terrence. Of course. Sure. This was fun. I'll do it <laughs> Liam again just came on and I just said goodbye. <laughs> Who is this? Who you just came in? Hey, Liam. Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, sorry, it's all over. You can listen to it on the internet once it's edited. <laughs> yeah, I recorded it. All right. Well, Thanks, cool. Derek. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. That was fun. Uh, I gotta get going back to work and draw some stuff. I Thank guess. you. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, you too. Thanks. Let's hang out. See you guys. Okay. Bye. Bye.